close your eyes and imagine this. A normal boy in a normal house with a normal family. Most people will picture a healthy boy, food on his plate, a roof over his head, mom and dad by his side. Now, picture this, a sick boy in a house where the roof fell in only months ago when airstrikes hit his town. Imagine a pregnant mother who prays for her children to survive one other day and a father whose heroic actions left him dead under layers of debris. But guess what? To that sick little boy, this life has become just normal. When I was 13, I was at Piraeus Port with a Swiss Red Cross and my neighbor. We were handing out bags of foods and necessities to the refugees coming in. I wasn't dressed up. I was wearing jeans and a jumper like every other volunteer. There were so many refugees coming in that I noticed a few walking away without a bag. So I grabbed five and ran off to them. But before I could reach them, a hand grabbed my shoulder and pulled me back. I was startled. I recognized the man. I was introduced to him and the rest of the Swiss Red Cross team only an hour ago by my neighbor. I smiled and asked if everything was OK. He didn't smile back. Actually, he seemed quite frustrated. And I instantly had this feeling that I had done something wrong. He replied, you're only allowed one bag. I looked at him. I looked at him, at the bags in my hand, and at the refugees walking away. And it hit me. He thought I was a refugee? I didn't know what to say. Was I supposed to be offended? Because I wasn't. I was lost. I was confused. Do I not? look like someone who wants to help others? I was angry. But how could I be angry at someone who was helping others just because he thought I wasn't following, following the rules? My voice shaking, I looked up at this adult man and I attempted to explain that I was a volunteer just like him and that we had met only an hour ago. He chuckled at my response and said, sorry, you don't look like our normal volunteers. He laughed like it was a valid mistake and I smiled because I didn't know what to say and I nodded because I didn't want to anger him either. But all I could think about was what made them so normal and me so different? What excluded me from the standard of normality? I didn't want to assume, not even in my head, because either I'm right and I allow this man's behavior to paint a picture of a young, thoughtful man sacrificing his weekend to help the less fortunate as a racist, or he's right and I'm just not normal. See, throughout years, we have defined our actions and our beliefs under one category, normal. We tell ourselves to be unique, but you know, Normal, normally unique. The Oxford definition of the word normal is a conforming to a standard, conforming, what is to, conforming to what is usual, typical, or expected. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about how you should be your own true self and not the standards set out by society. No, I'm here to tell you that this definition of normal is void. Why? Because there's no general consensus of normality because cultures change, time passes, and people doubt. If you go online and Google normal 2019, other than articles on Trump's speech on how it's normal to attack ISIS militants by knocking on the front door first, you'll find an article in The Spectator with the heading, bomb attacks are now a normal part of Swedish life. Within that article, I came across a statement made by the journalist that normalization is when something becomes part of everyday life. It is a given in social structure. 
So, normality is defined as a given. According to the article, it is a given that the Swedish population are suffering a wave of violence. It is a given that with this refugee crisis, there has been a rise in crime rates. It is a given that Swedish lives are unsafe. If the new normality in Sweden is hate and terror, to quote the article, the new reality is an epidemic. If the safety of Sweden is being brought to question, why is it listed as one of the top 20 safest countries in the world, according to the World Population Review? I'm not doubting the journalists. I'm just showing you that normality is subjective. If the new danger reality in Sweden isn't a standard agreed upon and doesn't follow the Oxford definition of normal, well, how can it be normal? That day, back at the port, I was so proud, so honored, because only moments ago I had translated for a refugee seeking medical advice from Arabic to Greek. A woman who was part of the Swiss Red Cross had just told me how difficult it had been communicating with the refugees and that thankfully many Arabs like myself had come to help. But if many people who looked like me had come to the port, why wasn't I the normal person to help? Maybe the man never asked why they were there. His perception was that the Greeks and the Swiss were helping the Arabs. And the idea that an Arab was helping the Arabs didn't fit. It distorted the image he was holding on to. Another question that came to my mind that day was how normality is driven primarily by the Northwestern demographic. Turn on the news and what do you see? American politicians, European problems, their crimes, their losses, their troubles. I grew up with BBC, CNN, and Arabic news channels on TV. On even the small Arabic news channels, you'd always hear about what was going on in Europe, about the marches in America and the chaos in the UK. But I can tell you how rarely I ever heard about kidnappings or terrorist attacks that took place in Middle Eastern countries on the news channels, on Northwestern news channels. Of course, maybe some were mentioned, but it was almost like there was a threshold to meet. There had to be enough death calls and enough Northwestern intervention for events there to make it on the news here. Experiences here are normality. Livelihood here is the typical form. Turn on the TV and you'll have a Western standard, whether it be education or family or politics. And that is where all our image of normality stems from. Have you heard of the Dole test? It was an experiment to see whether the social presentation creates an influence on our image of normality. In 2010, CNN went to eight different schools to see if their principle of representation and equality was really making a difference. 133 students of different age groups and different races were all asked to choose between dolls of different skin tones. As expected, the white children chose the white doll. But interestingly, the African-American children also chose the white doll. According to the experiment, children's idea about race, for the most part, doesn't evolve as they get older. Why? Well, the researchers concluded that we still live in a society where dark things are devalued and white things are valued, to a point where it has become a normal part of our everyday procedure. Normality is subdued in every small sector of our lives. It is not a standard. It is stereotypes, it is judgments, it is suppositions. Normality is having an image imprinted in your in your mind of someone because of how they act, where they're from, or how they speak. Normality is a protection. It is a layer that comforts you and keeps you away from things that might put you at risk. It is the reason you don't sit next to that weird guy and that really strange outfit he wears in, his, in the lecture class. And when an image of danger is presented to you, then it's not safe. It is not normal.
To the man on the port, I was normal. Because people who looked like me, he had seen on TV running away from war. Because people who looked like me were coming off a boat with everything they owned on their backs. He saw me and he made a judgment. Just like I assumed every person coming off that boat who looked like me was a refugee. But what if the people I was running after were intentionally walking away? What if they were there for the same reason I was? Maybe they were just volunteers too. Maybe if I dressed up that day and fixed my hair, he wouldn't have assumed I was a refugee. Maybe I would have been a normal volunteer if I tried a little harder. Camus once said that nobody realizes that some people expend tremendous energy merely to be normal. Now these aren't words to quote, these aren't quotes to add to your essay or doodle into your literature class book. These words, they hold more meaning than we like to believe. And I say this with experience. I'm ashamed to admit that I'm afraid to tell anyone I'm Arab or Muslim because for some reason that I can't even comprehend enough to explain to you all, I'm terrified that people will look at me like I'm not normal. And I'm not saying this for sympathy or for praise. I'm attempting to show you how much power that word had and has over me. And I don't even know what it means. And the thing is, I'm not the only one who's fallen a victim of it. We all have, one way or another. So, what should it, what should it mean? What should a word with no center represent? Okay, so I'm not suggesting that we completely eradicate the word normal from every single dictionary, but that we only change its core meaning. If I have to give one word as the foundation of normal, it is acknowledgement. Acknowledge that everyone's perception of normality is different. It's a spectrum. You can't understand normality without allowing yourself to acknowledge other people's experiences their vision of normality. Now to apply this foundation, I'm going to have to use a little bit of physics. So the Oxford definition of the word normal is of a line, ray, or other linear feature. Now there's a line missing here, but I'll still explain it to you. Normal, for a consensus of normality to be reached, you need to land at the point where a scenario which might not be normal to you and acknowledgement meet. If you don't recognize other people's paths, then you'll never be content with the diverse structure of the world. I'm not going to ask you all to accept. Why? Because I don't want you to accept that that sick little boy's life will forever be normal. But I want you to acknowledge that at this moment, Many children are living lives far different than your own. So let us use that definition, not what is typical or expected. Let us define normal as something we intersect to reflect off knowing more about ourselves and more about this world we all live in. Because if this world wants us to be typical and act the same expected way, I'm pretty sure I'm not. And I'm also quite sure none of you are either. Because if we all act the same expected way, we would have never evolved. And we would have never uncovered and discovered what we know now. Usually, it's normal to address a crowd at the beginning of a speech. But I feel like that would contradict all of my statements. So here it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, close your eyes once again. Imagine a normal boy living a normal life and ask yourselves, is this truly what is normal or what you only hope to be normal? Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm not normal, but that's perfectly normal. Thank you.